Hello and welcome back to another F-Series Friday. Today we are going to be talking about the possibility of Formula One introducing sprint races. So today I've got Charlotte, Steph and Kira with me um, and we're just going to chat around it. So girls, in case you don't know, I'm going to quickly do a little overcap of what the proposal is. So for the Friday, we're still going to have first practice and then we're going to go straight into a qualifying session. This qualifying session is going to be in the same format as it is at the moment. And this is going to decide the grid for a sprint race on the Saturday. This sprint race will be a third of the distance and half points will be awarded to the top eight finishers. So if you finish first in the sprint race, you've earned yourself 12 points. The positions that everyone finishes in this sprint race is what you're going to go on to the Sunday and the main race on the Sunday. The position you finish on the Saturday in the sprint race is where you're going to start on the Sunday for the main Formula One race. So firstly, girls, I just want to talk about if you think this is a good introduction. And I just want to say as well that this is still in the proposal stage and um, we're looking to get a decision before the Bahrain Grand Prix probably not before testing. And if it was introduced for the 2021 season, it would just be at three trial races. So it'd be the Canadian Grand Prix, the Brazilian Grand Prix, and the Italian, Italian. Grand, Prix. Grand Prix. So girls, what is your initial reaction to kind of this proposal? So it's quite similar to how F2 kind of do theirs, well, how they did do it. I know this year they've got a new kind of system that go in that's just some gone my head round, but it's quite similar to how F2 have done theirs. They'd have a practice session and then they'd have a qualifying session, then they would have their main race and then they'd have the sprint race. So it's very similar, just kind of swapped to Saturday and Sunday. And I like the way that works with Formula 2. With Formula 1, I don't know how it's going to go. I feel like you always look at Formula 1 and I think because Formula 1 is the pinnacle of motorsport, you get very used to what is going around there and then and you get used to the structure. And if you change anything, it's very, very weird to a lot of people because they just get used to how it is. Like, that's Formula 1, that's how it is. But if it was another series, I think people would be quite okay with it. But because it's Formula 1, they're like, oh, I'm not too sure. With me, I'd... I'm I'm not sure because I like the way Formula 2 do it, but I don't want Formula 1 to look like they're mimicking how a feeder series would do it. I don't want it to take away the uniqueness of a Formula 2 race, though. So I would like to see how it goes. I'm definitely not opposed to it. I would like to see how it runs, see if it works. We might do it and absolutely hate it, or we might do it and absolutely love it. So at the moment, I'd like to see it just to see what's, what's happening, but I'm not like 100% on board. Yeah, I'm kind of with Kira on that. I am very against change and I think that that's why I'm kind of against these sprint races. When I saw that they were proposing to just have them at three races, I was like, no, absolutely not. And then I thought, you know what, three out of 23 races, that's not bad. And that's a good enough proportion for it to not be too many and not be too overpowering, but also still be able to trial it. And then trialing it at some good tracks. Canada is going to be a good one for sprint races. Monza are fast. Brazil, they're all, they're like my favourite races. So I'm actually really excited to see how that it will kind of work. But yeah, it, in principle, I'm not a fan of the idea of sprint races, but I don't want to be the person that says no without even trying it, you know? Yeah, I think I'm very similar to you guys. Like when I heard about it coming in, like before when they were like proposing it, I was like, no, I don't want that. I'm like, Steph, I'm like, no, don't want it to change. I like the sell, I like doing calling, and that's it. But then the thing about it, like, free race out of 23 is not a lot. And I think it could be quite exciting because it literally could mean that the Sunday race, people could start anywhere. I know you're probably gonna probably still have the same sort of top five, sort of top six, but from then anyone could be anywhere like george russell could have a banger of a, of a sprint race and start somewhere like 12 and i think that's something that needs to happen in the sport like it needs to get more exciting so i'm quite excited to see how it goes like if it if it works then fair enough put it in more races if it doesn't work then at least we've tried it and we will never know if we don't try yeah definitely i agree with kind of the girls and what they've said i think there's some real benefits that can be taken from this so we always complain about how much practice time the teams are had. So in this race weekend format, it's cut down to just one practice session before going straight into quality. Woo! <laughs> um, also, the kind of teams lower down the grid as well, um, who are a lot better in race rather than in qualifying on pure pace, stand a lot more of a chance. 
So there's definitely good things that can be taken from this. But girls, do we think it's just a bit too gimmicky? So, because what I'm trying to think about is, is Formula One a kind of entertainment thing for the fans and you need to create these entertaining races and you need to use gimmicks to make the races as like dramatic as possible? Or is Formula One a professional sport? Because if, if people watch swimming and get bored, you don't change the rules of swimming, do you? <laughs> so, no. do you think this is just no, a bit too gimmicky, to or what's your thoughts? I feel like you, oh, sorry. I feel like you've been coming back to this quite a lot. Like, I feel like you're very anti-gimmicky, because you know when we were talking about um, reverse grid? <laughs> yeah. Reverse grid? <laughs> reverse, <laughs> grid. <laughs> reverse grid races, and you were just like, no, don't penalise the guys at the front, or like yeah. changing the point system. Don't penalise the guys at the front for them being good. And yeah yeah all of that but i think i don't know i feel like sprint race is a, a little bit different because it is still on track merit so williams is not going to be in first for the beginning of the race because of where it finishes in the sprint race does that make sense yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's still kind of going off of i don't think it's as gimmicky as some of the other things that we've discussed in the past that's what i'm trying to say and i just think that it will still be a true reflection of kind of where the constructors where everyone lies and because the midfield is so tight then that could really affect Sunday. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so, well, I've got a question because now I'm thinking about it in my head. So you do the practice session, then you do a simple qualifying session like you would so normally? So qualifying is, that is right? just same as normal. But then when you go into the sprint race, is it the same grid from there or do we reverse it no. at any stage? Because if not, we're just doing... So this, so I don't this really get is the kind the of point. point, this is the key point and we are obviously a big criticism of kind of formula two and how they do their grids is that you do have that reverse element however yeah. with the proposal for formula one there's no reverse element so the position you qualify you stay in for the sprint race and the position you finish the sprint sprint race is how you start the kind of normal race so typically so, lewis hamilton could actually be yeah. walking away from a weekend with 38 points instead of 25. Oh my god could you imagine? Nah, now the I get it. The championship would now be sealed in, at Silverstone in July. <laughs> no, I get it now. I thought we would, I, in my head I was like, we're going to reverse it like F2. Now that's changed things because Lewis, it, Lewis will qualify first. Lewis will do a sprint race. Lewis, when Lewis is in the front, Lewis isn't going to drop back to like seventh, is he? Like that never happens. So in the sprint race, it's just going to be easier for him to stay in the lead. And then the race is going to stay in the lead. Okay, no, now I don't <laughs> like it. Now I don't <laughs> like it. If we reversed some, like if we'd done the qualifying on Friday, reversed that for the sprint race, then it might be a little bit more, you know, competitive. Now I don't like it. Now I don't like it. I you, think I think the only thing that is like sort of that you can like sort of hope for, not hope for, because obviously we don't want anything bad to happen to the drivers, but like if say in a sprint race, say one of the top three teams, one of their engines blew up or one of them DNF'd, that would be, I think that's the only sort of way it would spice up the first sort of like mm. six, seven, eight drivers because we all know, we've watched Formula One for the past three, four seasons, how dominant some of these teams are and will always be Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen or like that sort of order. So I think unless in the sprint race, unless something happens to a car or a driver doesn't finish, that is going to be the only sort of way that it actually has a benefit on what it's like for the actual race. I mean, I don't know, I just, I, like, I don't, now I'm thinking about what Kira said, it is kind of a bit, yeah. not, like, I don't see it's the point of it. It's just another race for no this reason. Is, We're just getting rid of a practice session for a race. He knows that his drivers are going to be at the front for both of the race. This is why he said oh, yes. Oh, Titan. So I was like, yeah, bring in the change. It's fine. We're still going to be first and second every single bloody race. Well, picking up on that point, Kira, that you just said, it's like a kind of pre-race to the race. That's exactly how Sebastian yeah. Vettel kind of described it the other day. He said it was a pre-final to the final and that it didn't affect anything, which is very true. Um, Will, Will Buxton has also spoke on this and he says that the way you create exciting races is you need a bit of jeopardy in it. You need to create that thrill and excitement by kind of having the unexpected there. So do you think that these sprint races or like a third a third distance, so 100 kilometers kind of, do you think that's enough of a kind of time length to be able to create this like unknown element? 
or do you think it's just going to be kind of Lewis Hamilton drives off from the start and nothing changes? Because we've seen some incredible starts from people like Gio. Gio. Do you think mm. at, if it's just a third distance, he'll be able to keep that up and won't Ooh, fall back? That's really interesting. This is actually quite hard to, to like think about because like obviously we've not seen it in F1 before and we know that like sometimes in qualifying like some there is some surprises so i want to i don't know like i'm really really just confused. on that point <laughs> so. if you think third of the distance are we having pit stops in these sprint races likely no. not no so therefore tire and strategy tire management and strategy are going to be very interesting like imagine you start on a soft tire but you've only got I'm trying to think of lap times all the times. Say this sprint race is about 30 to 40 minutes long. That's not very long. You yeah. could, you know, you could be on a mediums that whole time. And Lewis Hamilton, we know how well the Mercedes kind of works on medium tyres. They're going to go off into the distance. But if you think about in the actual midfield, how you manage your tyres is actually going to be really <laughs> imp imperative as to how the race is going to turn out. And so you could have a guy on, tire on hards who then has more tyre left at the end or you could have someone who starts on softs and then their tyres are completely burnt out by the end of the race or is everyone going to have to start on the same tyres? What? Um, so there's still there's That's still loads of questions that. obviously they're still trying to get the proposal update they'll need to talk about DRS if that's available how tyre allocations over the whole weekend work kind of if you if the cars are in part firmly from like the end of the sprint race to the feature or the normal race so there's still loads of questions so as we say there is so much unknown they're still not sorted it basically um i like the thought of tires going off because we see that in a formula 2 sprint race you know you will have this winner that say is you could even have it where you know pit stops aren't mandatory but some people will pit pit you know we've seen Luca Giotto do it before we've seen Charlotte Claire do it before in Formula 2 sprint race they will pit when you don't think they should pit and then they'll just zoom across the field so that could be an option as well the only issue is, is sometimes when I look at a Formula 2 sprint race well, obviously they are shortened as well I think oh we could have had a couple more laps here oh, it would have been nice if we had a couple more laps maybe maybe for that person who is on the fresher tyres to catch up to the leader so that's the only thing is say if we do have a situation where pit stops are not mandatory however someone does decide to pit and come up the field are we then going to have enough laps for them to catch the front leaders you know or are we not going to have enough time so there's always two and fro ins and I'm just, I'm not sure. But if if they came to us with this big race idea and said, yeah, but we'll reverse it from the Friday to the Saturday, absolutely, count me in. But if they're not going to reverse it, I, don't, I really don't understand the point. I think it's quite interesting, like, the fact that there's only one practice session as well because they mm. will have to find figure out a strategy and tyres and look at everything, like, electrical in that car and then go from there and I think that's actually really like something to look out for because we all know that some people don't have good strategies and they have free practice sessions so what's it going to be like having one? Definitely. So do you do you think that this is going to be a good thing for the fans if we did actually get sprint race weekends for kind of just normal racing maybe in 2022 or whatever do you think this would be better for the fans because I already sometimes feel like my weekend's taken up with racing, which I love. But also, if qualifying's now moving to a Friday, it's really pushing like three days and entry level fans as well might kind of not be encouraged to kind of join in and learn about Formula One and kind of watch it if it's getting a bit too complicated and there's too much going on. Do you think that might be a problem as well? Oh my God, I am now loads I'm thinking. to see on this now. Now Whoa. I'm just thinking, like, on a Friday, I don't really watch it because yeah. I don't care about practice, but I'm going to have to, like, actually sit there for three days in a row and actually proper pay attention. Okay. And I think another thing is... No, sorry, no, Steph, just go, you before go. you go, I'll, 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 I'll say my little ideas. point. <laughs> <laughs> um, fri as we know, people, most people work a nine to five, Monday to Friday. Even if it's not a nine to five, people work Monday to Friday. I sometimes used to take Fridays off to watch practice, but I know a lot of people don't because people aren't interested in practice. However, now you're at a stage where you will have to watch that Friday afternoon because that is, you know, quite concrete. Normally people can like, say for example, my dad, he doesn't watch the practice, but he'll read up on it after. But it's very different if you've got a qualifying session on the Friday, you know, people are gonna have to find the time out of their normal lives and their working jobs to be able to watch this. And I thought the whole point of us condensing 
events in the weekend down was so people didn't have to do that and so we saved time for you know people on track and also fans but now it just feels like it's actually taken up more time yeah and on that point it was it's like we have gone to 23 races and i thought that a lot of the reason that we were going to condense the weekend down was because we were going to so many races and can you imagine with all of the triple headers that we've got imagine if there were sprint races so you finish racing on a sunday you've got to get back you've got to. i'm just thinking about baku this year going straight to canada on literally the other side of the world mm. could you imagine finishing racing yeah. on that sunday and you have to um be on your a game for the following friday i know you kind of have to be on your a game for practice but it's, it's practice so it doesn't matter as much as quality but could you imagine those poor drivers and the poor engineers and strategists and everyone that works having to actually prep themselves for a qualifying on a, tax on a Friday? Just seems a bit insane. And then also what's a little bit irritating is that we've got all of these great feeder series now and they're not going to have as much hype time if Formula One is on every single day. So I know that Formula Two and Formula Three are kind of leading me up to Formula One in the weekend mm -hmm. and then we've got w series coming in this um this year and if formula one is on all of those days and it just seems to be detracting from those other series as well if you've got a sprint race on on the saturday well when are you going to find time to slot in the other series that we're trying to promote around formula one does that make sense mm. yeah, yeah. I've literally not got my head around this weekend format at all. Like, I've not got my head around the new F3 and F2 format. They've got, like, 60 million races. We're now going to have this. Very confusing for absolutely no reason. I don't think there was anything wrong with last year's format. So now it's just, like, I'm really confused. I'm getting confused. So, final thoughts then. Matteo Bonato says that these sprint races will make the weekends spectacular and unpredictable. Do you girls agree? Final thoughts. Not no, unpredictable, yeah. It could be in the midfield, but it's because the front of the grid isn't really very unpredictable anyway. So it will remain unpredictable in the places that are already unpredictable, but it's not going to create a new sense of unpredictability as to who's going to win what races. Yeah. We know who's going to be. We know who's going to be winning. And it's not you, Mattia. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> Thank you very much everyone for watching. As always, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment because we love reading all of your comments. Um, please also subscribe if you've not yet already. Road to 1K. See you next F-Series. Bye. Bye. Bye.